Okay, brilliant. Uh, hello, everyone, and welcome back to the show. And just before we start, I wanted to thank you all because um, I was looking on uh, I was looking at the show analytics the other day, and I was surprised to see that we had a couple of or at least over a hundred views, which was amazing. And I was yeah, you know, it made my week. And you know, anything out of the norm with lockdown is always nice. So I appreciate that, and thank you for all the support in that area. And today I was just um, going to focus on a really interesting story about, uh, well, it's interesting and tragic at the same time. And we're going to be talking about Justin Fashanu today. And he, the main, his main claim to fame, essentially, is that he was the first million pound, million pound black player, but he was also the first professional footballer to um, come out as gay. So... It, he's a he's a landmark figure in both uh, in both of those spheres, and also he died twenty two years ago. So um, yeah, this is his story. I hope he's enjoyed the episode, and if you do, please like the video. And if you want me to cover any specific topics, let me know in the comments. So let's get into the story. So Fashanu was initially raised in the London area of Hackney where his Nigerian father was a law student and his Guyanese mother a nurse. When he was a young boy, his parents split up and his father returned to Nigeria. Fashanu and his three siblings were therefore put into care, and he, along with his younger brother John, who would also become a professional footballer, spent most of their youth with foster parents in Shropham, which is in Norfolk. Fashanu first made headlines as a boxer, reaching two national finals for his age group as a teenager. He was a tall, strong and aggressive boy, and he was also making rapid progress in youth and reserve football at the time where he was at Norwich City, uh, playing as a centre forward. And he made his debut for the club's first team at age 17. He played 103 matches for Norwich, scoring 40 goals. And while at Norwich, he was also chosen for the England under-21 team. And all of this success... Well, all of this quite early success would lead to him joining Nottingham Forest in 1981, and under the, and this at this time they were double European Cup winners, and you know they were really on the up. So this is a this is a big um, a big occasion for uh, for Justin, and especially the fact as well that he cost he cost um, Nottingham Forest a million pounds, which was uh, so he was the first black player to do so. But that would be the only really good news for him at Forest. He would endure a, miser a miserable season with the team, scoring only three goals while being subjected to extreme verbal abuse from Brian Clough, the manager of Nottingham Forest, who would regularly call him a poof in training. So poof is a derogatory term for a gay person, essentially. Uh, after And this was as a response to him being spotted in gay nightclubs around Nottingham. And then that, that season as well, Fashanu became a born-again Christian and struggled for the rest of his life to reconcile his religious beliefs and his sexuality. Obviously, that would be kind of obvious because um, Christianity and uh, homosexuality do not mix. And yeah, that would plague him for the rest of his life. And after playing on loan at Southampton, because he was sent out on loan there and whatever, he ended up ultimately transferring to Notts County in 1982. A year later, he injured his right knee and he was never able to play at the same level again. He moved to Brighton in 1985, Brighton being um, one of the gay capitals of Britain, but his contract was cancelled in 1986 and he was advised to retire. Following an operation in LA, he played professionally in North America while unsuccess unsuccessfully attempting a, attempting a comeback in England. And this all culminated in 1990, where he, where Fashanu, knowing a British son, a Sunday newspaper, was about to expose his sexuality. Uh, he actually sold he, like um, a story saying that he was gay to the Sun, under the headline "One Million Pound Soccer Star: I Am Gay." So I guess I'm just what I'm going to do now is just give a bit of background about what was it, what it was like. To be, to be a gay man in Britain at the time. So to be a gay man in Britain, it was confronted by overwhelming animosity. And even though the Sexual Offences Act of 1967 
had actually de decriminalized homosexuality, inequality remained, notably around the age of consent and the right to marry, while broader prejudices were widespread. In the 1980s, an environment that had already restricted the freedoms and rights of gay men had become downright hateful. The em epidemic of HIV toxified the treatment of gay and lesbian people. Misinformation about the syndrome was rife. In the US, HIV was publicly described as GRID, or Gay-Related Immune Deficiency, for several months in 1982, suggesting that there was something particularly wrong with gay people that rendered the community responsible for the virus. And obviously, we all know that this isn't true. HIV is a sexually um, transmitted disease that can be picked up by anyone. And this scientifically inaccurate myth lingered, and British newspapers fired warnings about a gay plague throughout the decade, which is horrible. And imagine the fear, I guess. I guess well, I want you all to imagine the fear that Fashani would have felt and like what this could have meant for his career, his faith, and his relationship with his friends and family. And as a young, talented young footballer, like he had it all, you know, he had the contract, and he also had a wife during this time as well. But then it was just like, just like this little thing inside him trying to convince him, no, this is not really who you are, and just that conflict in his mind. And ultimately... He kind of gave in, and perhaps rightly, or whichever way you want to interpret it, I'm not. That's not for me to say. Um, he 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 chose his feelings, and he came out as gay. And I guess it didn't really uh, for many gay men. It was or for many gay people in general, coming out was a positive and libera a liberating experience. It represents the deepest. He, uh, it, it's almost like an intake of breath and it's just like releasing it. However, in Fashanu's case, it was brutal and bruising. He couldn't feel fright, like, due to the homophobic nature of football fans at that time, he couldn't really, like, be happy about it. He was shamed at every corner. And this is not, uh, this is even, not even limited to his teammates as well. He regularly changed in the referee's room rather than with his teammates at one of his clubs. And even when he was at West Ham, players refused to bathe with him after games. The tabloid media, turbocharged by a conservative government that demonised gay people under law and stigmatised the community in its rhetoric, presided over, an, over alarming levels of intrusion. And the pressure came from all angles. And, obviously, as he was a born-again Christian, he had heard, like, um, there was alarming accusations within that church that actually, um, while they told him not to be gay, there was a massive public backlash there. So, as a black man, he received vicious racist abuse from the terrorists, but he also would have uh, achieved, um, achieved, that sounds wrong, he would have also uh, gotten the um, backlash from, uh, the community, from the fans about his sexuality as well. And as a result, you know, he found himself in the US, which is a lot more accepting at that time anyway. And it kind of seemed to be on the up for him. He was playing at Maryland. He was coaching kids, despite uh, owners saying that he shouldn't be suitable, which is completely homophobic. But, you know, he was moving on with his life and he was, he was getting America. He was happy. But then just, it, it, then it took another turn. Just over a month before he took his own life, a 17-year-old American boy, whose identity is protected, accused Fashanu of sexual assault. So I won't go into the details, but essentially, um, these two, uh, Fashanu and this 17-year-old boy were together. They were having sex, apparently, and then one said it was consensual, one said it wasn't consensual. That's the that's the nooks and, nooks and crannies of it, essentially. That's all we really need to know, because I don't really want to be going into it. And when he reported to the police, uh, the police department, Howard County Police Department, registered five charges, including first and second degree assault, in, a, in addition to second degree sexual assault. Two of the charges, however, were the, for the crimes of sodomy and perverted practice. These laws in the state of Maryland criminalized sexual activities between same-sex uh, same individuals, even if they occurred on a consensual basis. And the laws 
uh, like they, you know, um, effectively banning sexual relations between gay people were enshrined under the same unnatural or perverted sexual practices act that declared it illegal to have sexual relations with an animal. And it's mad to think this, right? But these homophobic laws were only repealed four months ago. Four months. Yeah. And obviously, um, this had a terrible effect on uh, on Justin. He went back to England, and then the following day, he was found dead in a shortage uh, in the shortage garage, in a in a garage in Shoreditch, having having killed himself. And he left a suicide note. And in his suicide note, he insisted that his sexual contact with a young man was consensual. And he also expressed fears that he would not receive a fair trial as a black gay man against a white complainant in the US state. So, as you can see, this kind of goes towards modern times as well, where people feel like they won't get a free trial, um, a fair trial if they're black, which is fair enough. That's their own decision. And I guess this is kind of like. I'm not. I'm. I kind of would think that this would suggest why there's not many. I know there's gay. There's gay footballers within um, the women's game because it's probably more accepting, and those their fans tend to be more accepted, uh, acceptable towards those things. And um, even in a uh, semi-professional game, there are gay footballers, but certainly. I can't see it. I'm I'm sure if you do see it, comment down below. But I certainly don't see any time soon where a gay where a footballer is gonna come out as gay. Like there may be yeah, that footballer may be gay, but he's never gonna come out. Because especially if we have a look at the social media abuse, the abuse from the stands, which probably still exists. But but now we have like the social media, as we've seen with like the likes of Ian Wright. Well, I'm not. Uh, well, it's a completely different topic. They're very like people are vicious on social media, so I'm not sure if people really, if footballers really want to be adding that to their lives. And uh, for the sake of their families, I don't see it happening certainly anytime soon. But yeah, so that was the story of Justin Fasha- uh, Fashanu. And if you liked it, please make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel, as we'll have many more videos talking about uh yeah um on this show i'll be talking about loads of different types of football stories but there's also loads of other different shows where they're talking about topics such as the good news of the week much un- unlike this or un- unlike this episode and there's also other shows uh other in individual separate shows talking about just what just life in general so i'm sure whatever you want to be listening to you'll certainly find something enjoyable here But yeah, that's it pretty much. Um, I'll see you all next week. Goodbye.